I remember that the, she came up with this brilliant idea that she wants to go into the domain where really, you know, all engineers believed in something. I realized she is pretty tough. The pressure comes from the fact that we have funding to reach some goals that we set and things that we promise and we need to hit that goals. A young chemical engineer has a business idea. She convinces experts and sponsors to invest money and time in her and soon she is a CEO of a startup and has to learn new things from scratch. This is the third story of the new podcast by ETH Zurich. The first four episodes focus on entrepreneurship at ETH on all levels, from student projects to successful spin-offs. I am Jennifer Kakshuri. Chapter 1. Pioneering The startup world at ETH Zurich is still rather male-dominated. It's difficult to find a woman amongst all the men, but I found one. I am uh, Michela Puddu. I am co-founder and CEO of Felixa, a spin-off of ETH Zurich. Michela is in her early 30s. Her path from being a student and becoming a businesswoman had a lot to do with the fact that she landed at ETH. I am originally from Italy. Uh, I was born and grew up in Rome. To me, the most beautiful city in the world. And I moved when I was about 25 to Zurich for my master thesis. Uh, so it was supposed to be just a six month stay. And then I uh, enjoyed so much the environment that I decided to stay longer and uh, started my PhD. And afterwards, uh, <laughs> I liked it so much. <laughs> then I even founded a company. So I was uh, eager to continue and uh, commercialize what I've been developing. The company, that's the startup, Helixa. The goal of Helixa is to bring a specific method into different markets. The idea is to use DNA as a barcode, as our identifier, in order to track product across the whole supply chain. An example of a solution that we are providing at the moment, it's a kit to trace gemstone from the mine until the end customer. So essentially you apply our uh, tracers to the raw stone at the mine and the tracers travel together with the stone and survive processing like polishing, cutting uh, until uh, the final product. And on the end product, you can do a quick paternity test that allows you to tell where the gemstone comes from. So the actual mine of provenance, which does not only tell the economical value, but also the ethical and sustainability standards adopted by the mines in terms of environmental protection, working conditions, and so on. Track down the origin of gemstones. The method applies to several different fields. For example, in the fashion industry, you can track down the origin of different fabrics, such as cotton. Or Helixa is able to find out where pollutants in groundwater come from. This specific idea has already intrigued many people. The strength is that it's a unique opportunity on the smallest scale, nanoparticles, to label um, any kind of product and to find it later on. This is Detlef Günther. He's the vice president for research in corporate relations at the ETH Zurich. Detlef Günther is also responsible for the Pioneer Fellowship Program. In this program, master or PhD students who intend to develop a highly innovative product can apply and, if they are lucky enough to convince the jury, they get a grant of 150,000 Swiss francs to develop their idea and project for 18 months. I free my agenda all the time to really be present in the jury because I like to hear about the ideas of the youngsters. And it's always amazing what good ideas come up. They present it sometimes, let's say, at not really focused on, on some ideas. It's really a broad range. But then finally, what's developed later on, if I see them six months later, it's just fantastic. Michaela was one of those successful pioneer fellows. Originally, her pitch was focused on the application of tracing fluids to discover more about oil fields. Detlef Günther has a clear recollection of her presentation. Yes, I remember that she came up with this brilliant idea that she wants to go into the domain where really, you know, all engineers believed in something and they have 
spent, I don't want to say tons of chemicals, but a lot. And then all of a sudden there's this young lady coming with a bottle of 10 mils with these nanoparticles and uh, she is telling them, my material does it better. Uh, I remember that I said, well, what a courage, this um, lady. And I wrote down, I wish that she will have a lot of success. And I made three crosses, very positive, because I believe in this idea. I was uh, lucky enough to be supported by the Pioneer Fellowship program. It gives you the chance to do a smooth transition from the really academic work to the more business industrial landscape and to learn those things that you haven't learned during your PhD or, or during your master. What are those things you need to know as a businesswoman and didn't learn as a student? There are challenges on any possible level, so that go from administrating simple things to managing people to legal aspects to negotiations. So it's every time something new and something to learn and trying to do it the best possible way. The Pioneer Fellows get free office space in the Innovation and Entrepreneurship Lab, also called the IE Lab. If their company develops well, they can prolong their stay past the 18 months, but then they need to pay rent. Michaela and her company Helixa are presently at that point. They pay rent for their office and lab space at the ETH Zurich Hönkeberg campus. It's on a hill with a view over Zurich. That's where we meet her again. Chapter 2. Building a team. So here we are in um, the lab facilities we are renting. It's a chemistry lab, so here is where we do the manufacturing of the tracers and also the analysis of samples of products that we receive. So for me, who doesn't know what it is, it looks like a scale that's moving with liquid bottles. Two, four, six, eight liquid bottles. Yeah, what? this adds up to roughly one liter of tracers, which essentially is enough to trace the whole lake of Zurich to give you a scale. Wow. Michaela spends most of her time in the office space and not in the chemistry lab, even if the lab is an important facility for Helixa. Myself, I do mostly sales, negotiation of contracts and the day-to-day -day business, even administration and... Of course, I discuss with the team uh, about achievements, about what to do next. And I mean, obviously, with my co-founder, we discuss every day and agree on the next steps. She and her co-founder are the core team. We set up the company two years ago and immediately had revenue so we could somewhat self-finance ourselves. On the top of that, we receive other grants and funding, mostly equity-free, uh, which allow us to be independent for the first two years. And during these two years, we had some important milestones, generated some intellectual property. We launched our first product in the mining industry and we grew the team, so from two to now six people. And now the turning point is getting an investor in the company, so the first equity investment round. Which we'll hear about again later. Let's first speak about building up a team. Michaela sees this part of her job as one of the most challenging tasks. Obviously, we are looking for people that had a technical background that would fit uh, with uh, what we are doing, but doesn't necessarily have to fit one-to-one. -one. So, I mean, skills can be acquired. Uh, important is that we see the talent and this is all, all smart people that we see can learn fast. And then uh, what is really crucial is the personality because in, in such a small team, it's important that everybody uh, get along. Otherwise, the work becomes very difficult. So it's really important to have a team that enjoy spending time together at work and outside. A little bit like family. It somehow fits to what she says about her company. For me, it's like a baby, so I have all the interest in keeping the baby alive. It's a personal challenge, not only a challenge against the outside world. So, I, I mean, I want to make it work, and, and that's the big motivation. We, we have a vision, and we see big potential, and we want to make this work. 
Chapter 3 Selling ETA Industry Day, that's a yearly get together of several hundred people from industry and startups, an important networking event. Up at Hönkerberg in a hall, students and young entrepreneurs have stands where they present the products that they have been working on. Helixa is present as well. I meet product manager Punit Mera, a 24-year-old German who is also a native speaker of English and Hindi. And he's a good salesman, even though his strength is chemical engineering, which he studied at ETH Zurich. What do you hope you'll go home with? Good new contacts, new ideas, so also input from the people we meet. We have people from diverse industries here today. So I think the whole network behind it is always, it's, it's quite helpful. You learn a lot. Did you just exchange uh, business cards or how did you do it? So we generally exchange business cards, um, take the contacts and um, yeah, that's it. We keep in touch, we try. Let's see how much replies we get. <laughs> It's always all the spin-offs um, report later on that they greatly appreciate that we involve them into the industrial day because it is 650 industrial partners. They all walk around, uh, interact, and even the end, uh, this was this year something new, even at the end, nobody left immediately after 5.30. They all stayed almost till 8 o'clock and longer uh, and used the time to network, uh, reflect some of the ideas, and uh, all the Reports later on and comments were very positive, in particular from our spin-off companies. Chapter 4. Advancing. We meet Michaela again a few weeks later. In the meantime, Helixa underwent a big change as a result of a new partnership with Zürcher Kantonalbank and with the Swiss chemical company Clariant as lead investor. We had quite a busy summertime. <laughs> the main event was that we closed our first investment round with uh, Clariant as a strategic investor. And for us, this is a significant step, opening up uh, many opportunities. Our technology fits very well in several product categories and application of Clariant. And therefore, we are very excited of this collaboration and we believe will greatly contribute to the future success of the company. Wow, that's a dream come true for a startup. But the Helixa team didn't have a lot of time to celebrate. Closing an investment round takes up quite some time from the management team. So we had to go finally, I would say, uh, back to business. So all the projects that were temporarily parked or delayed uh, to take off again. Michaela doesn't want to disclose the details of the new investment contract, but she says... Uh, it was a good learning the negotiation of the deal per se. We meet Punit again, who I spoke to at the industry day. He tells me he detected a previously unknown side of his boss, Michaela, when he went to sales meetings with her. I realized she is pretty tough. It's very difficult for anybody else to negotiate against her, and she just has a plan, and she goes straight through with it, and uh, is very tough on that, but also very fair. If she thinks this is the best deal for the company, for the people who work there, she will fight for that. Punit is well aware of the challenges his bosses are encountering. One of those is putting a team together with people who really match. Who grows up and says, hey, I'm going to manage a team of six people. It's, it's not always easy. Every person is different. Every person needs different communication sometimes or different words to encourage or just a simpler introduction. I think in these things, you do see that they need some learning, but I think it's a small, minor thing. We are learning on how to, to do it better. And it's still, for me, the most difficult task to hire good people. And once they are hired, to make sure that they fit and that, that everybody is happy in the company and rewarded and that the mood is high. And at the moment, the vibes are very positive. I'm very happy of the current team. It seems in a startup, there is never a moment to relax. On one side, to get more money is a relief, 
but it is also a new burden. The pressure comes from the fact that we have funding to reach some goals that we set and things that we promise and we need to hit that goals. Michaela and her team of Helixa managed the transition from the academic to the business world, but they have one big step to go. At the moment, they try to explore some of these, what we call a killer application, to really make it into the market. I see, actually, that it has such a huge potential for all kinds of application, but to find the door, this is, at the moment, really the key part. And do you think they'll find the door? Oh, yeah. I'm... 100% convinced uh, they need a little bit more breath, I think, at the moment. The question is, what kind of industry recognizes the potential first? And then it could be disruptive for a, a lot of things. There's just one more thing I want to mention. Michaela told me that she wanted to motivate everybody in her team to go running, for instance, as a group during a lunch break. Her thought behind it... Physical fitness is the ground of a fresh, productive mind. She herself trains and runs and swims on a regular basis. She even just started to train and compete in triathlons. Could she motivate the people in her company as well? No, we don't manage to make them run all the time. <laughs> Some are particularly resistant to running. <laughs> Presumably Punit is one of them. I remember talking to him about this at the industry day. When you applied to work for Helixa, was it a topic if you're also a runner or not? Yes, it was. And um, I was honest about it. I said, I'm not a good runner yet, but I can try. And uh, we'll see. This is the podcast by ETA Zurich. Produced by Tis Wachter's Audio Story Lab and by me, Jennifer Kakshuri. Music, sound design and mastering by Luki Fritz. <laughs>